In this lesson, we're going to go over a few more identities, starting with the product to sum identities. As the name implies, it's going to allow us to take a product of sines and cosines and change it into a sum. To show where these come from, I stated the sum difference formulas for sine, where if you add or subtract two angles together, we get this stuff over here. An observation to make is that on the right side of these two equations, I have a positive cosine alpha sine beta and a negative cosine alpha sine beta. If I add those two things together, they cancel. So what happens if I just add both sides of these equations together at once? So I'll draw it like this. If we add these together, on the left, we get sine of alpha minus beta plus sine of alpha plus beta. So that is this thing plus this thing. On the other side of my equation, well, I get two sine alpha cosine betas. And like I said before, this stuff is zero. So you can, if you want, you put you know, plus zero. This actually allows us to solve for sine alpha and cosine beta if we divide both sides by two. And I'll write it like this. On one side, we'll have 1 half times sine of alpha minus beta plus sine of alpha plus beta. And that is equal to sine of alpha times cosine of beta. And what comes out of this formula is what we call the product to sum identity. Here we have a product of sine and cosine. And over here, it's really the sum of two different sine functions. So this is the proof, and on the next slide, we'll actually go over a computation using this thing. So here at the top, I just stated what I derived on the last slide, that sine of alpha times cosine of beta is really equal to 1 half of sine of alpha minus beta plus sine of alpha plus beta. Example 1 says, use this formula to change this product into a sum. So the left side here of this equation is a sine times a cosine, and that's exactly what we have here. I'm just going to identify that, okay, well, alpha is equal to 2x, and beta is equal to 3x. If I plug all this information into this formula, I can split this product into the sum of two sine functions. So that is sine of 2x times cosine of 3x is really equal to 1 half of sine of, all right, now alpha was 2x and beta was 3x, so that's 2x minus 3x, plus sine of alpha was 2x, and we'll add on beta, which is 3x. The only thing left to simplify is combine the like terms, so sine of 2x, times cosine of 3x is equal to 1 half of, so this is sine of, well, 2x minus 3x is really negative x, and then we have sine of 2x plus 3x is 5x, and here we've taken a product of a sine and a cosine and re-expressed it as the sum of two trig functions. Technically, there are four product to sum formulas, and I've stated them here. So you could have a sine times a cosine, cosine times sine, the product of two sines, the product of two cosines. And one thing that isn't surprising up here is that, well, the formula for sine times cosine and cosine times sine, they're actually the same exact thing, but that makes sense because uh, multiplication is commutative. In terms of the proofs of these things, what you can do is use some difference formulas for sine and cosine to try to prove these. So try that if you'd like. Um, but it works the same way as what I did on the first slide. Example 2 says, use the above formula to rewrite the expression here as a sum. So if you come across something like this, you have to identify, well, which of these formulas is going to be helpful. I see I have a cosine times a cosine, and therefore I must use this thing here. I'm just going to note that alpha is equal to 15x and beta is equal to 7x. 
and the rest is simply plugging values into this identity. Cosine of 15x times cosine of 7x is equal to 1 half of, okay, that's going to be cosine of 15x minus 7x plus cosine of 15x plus 7x. If I combine like terms, I will get my final answer. It's 1 half of, okay, cosine of 15 minus 7, that is a positive 8x, and then cosine of 15x plus 7x is 22x. And that is how this can be simplified. Just as we have a product to sum identities, you can reverse this and get a sum to product identity. So that is, can you take a sum of two trig functions and rewrite it as a product? So here, for the sum of two signs, I wrote down the corresponding sum to product formula. And what I'm going to do is just directly identify what x is equal to and what y is equal to, and then simplify it to a product. So here it looks like x is equal to 10 degrees and y is equal to 8 degrees. According to this formula, this sum is equivalent to 2 times sine of, all right, I'm first going to add the x and the y and divide by 2, and then multiply by cosine of 10 degrees minus 8 degrees, divide by 2. And we've done it. We took a sum, and over here we have a product of two trig functions. Obviously, we can simplify what's inside the parentheses, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is equal to 2 times sine of, okay, that's 18 over 2, that's 9 degrees. And then we have cosine of 10 minus 8 is 2 degrees, and 2 divided by 2 is 1 degree. And here, we have taken a sum and changed it into a product. There are a total of 4 sum to product identities for these trig functions. So you could add two sines, you could subtract two sines, you could add two cosines or subtract two cosines, and they correspond to these products over here. These formulas, um, it's not important that you, let's say, memorize them. You should just know about them and how to apply them. And that's what I want to do in example three. Here I see I have a difference of two cosines. Is there some way I could change this into a product? So we just have to make sure we can identify the correct formula. So here I have a difference of two cosines, and that means I'm going to use this identity here. I'll just identify what x is equal to. It looks like x will act as 100 times a, and y is going to be 20 times b. The rest is just plugging in everything correctly. According to this identity, it's 2 times sine of Okay, first we'll add these two amounts and divide by 2. So that's 100a plus 20b divided by 2. And we're going to multiply that by sine. Okay, and here we have the difference of the two. So that is going to be 100a minus 20b all over 2. I suppose this could be simplified a little bit. There's a factor of 2 that can cancel from the numerators of both of those fractions. So half of 100a is 50a, and half of 20b is 10b. This is multiplied to sine of, again, taking half of 100a is 50a, half of 20b is 10b, and this is our final answer.